Yeah, it's uh, over 90 degrees here in the man cave, so I'm heading outside. It is hot today, and it's getting hotter. They said it could get up close to 100 degrees today, and that's pretty rare for here in Ohio. What's happening, cats? Good to have you join me today. You know, I've been watching the uh, uh, season nine of Alone. I don't know if you ever watched that show where they take like 10 participants out into the uh, Canada wilderness and drop them off at different locations to survive on their own to see how long they can survive. And the one who survives the longest wins, <clears throat> I don't know, a handful of cash. Is it worth it? I don't know. You have to really be into that. <clears throat> I like watching it because I like to see how they build their shelters. You know, they have to they have to hunt for food, they have to get water, and they have to have shelter uh, from the weather. And some of them are very clever. Now, I would love building the shelter. I think I could excel at that, but as far as anything else, uh, getting food might be a challenge. I mean, these guys are professional hunters and fishermen, and some of them have a real challenge. So, uh, I know that would be my weak point. Anyway, as far as <laughs> roughing it goes, the most that I've ever roughed it was sleeping in a tent on the ground. In fact, I used to take my motorcycle, you know, all over the place and, and pack up all my gear on the back of it. And uh, that was my abode, you know, I'd set up the tent and throw my Thermarest mattress in there, sleeping bag, and that's where I laid my head for the night. Uh, but <clears throat> as time went on, V and I decided to up the ante a little bit. We uh, needed, you know, we're getting older and, and with considering the health conditions that we've endured, uh, we decided to push it up and, and get the, uh, what we call the Hemi, the Salem Hemisphere, the uh, glamper of uh, camping. And, and some people will say, well, that's not even camping, Itchy. Well, to me it is. I mean, I, we can set this up on a campsite and get the campfire going. I can still cook over the fire and everything. And then at night we can go in there and uh, comfortably sleep in a queen size bed and uh, get up feeling refreshed in the morning you're not sleeping on the ground you have a restroom in there that you can use at night and you don't have to walk somewhere to an outhouse or dig a hole in the ground like i've had to do in the past so yeah this is a little quite a bit more luxurious uh, as far as that goes but uh, as far as camping goes um, we're hoping to get out and do some camping this summer, although I don't have anything currently reserved. Uh, we'll just have to see how things go here uh, with V and everything. But uh, I was reminded back years ago of a camping trip we took with the Hemi when it was relatively new. Now, we had... Uh, befriended some actually a guy that was one of my uh, YouTube viewers and uh, he wanted to catch up he has, has a Harley and he wanted to catch up and he lives down in the southern part of the state and so we agreed that we would he has a toy hauler which is about the same size as our Hemi and uh, we agreed that we would meet at the halfway point and camp at a state park. Good plan, okay. Well, about the same time, my brother flew in from California. And he had just gone through a really, really hard divorce. And it had kind of mentally shattered him. He was really struggling and needed family and so he was kind of bouncing around between staying at some of my brother's homes. And it was, it was a rough situation uh, because of his state that he was in. Uh, it, he made it somewhat difficult for those that were trying to 
to help him or nurture him. At any rate, my wife and I, we hooked up the Hemi and we drove down to the uh, state park that we had made reservations far in advance for. I'm heading up here on the hill. It's kind of cool up here under the pines. So I'll sit up here in the uh, pet cemetery. So we got to the state park and we set up camp and everything. And our friends showed up. They uh, had already set up their camp. They had already been there when we arrived. And uh, not too long after we had set up camp, my brother comes rolling in in his car and he gets out and he says hey you guys don't mind if I camp with you I'm like okay I mean he is my brother you know so uh, yeah that that's fine that's fine well I mean our, our Hemi can uh, sleep up to six people V and I have an, our own separate bedroom in there with the door that closes and then the couch folds out into a bed so I said okay you can sleep there so we had been there, probably hadn't even been there the first day, and as the afternoon rolled in, I, I hear some Harleys. You know, if you, when you ride a Harley, you recognize a Harley right away. And uh, I could hear them kind of pull in and shut off right across the street from where we were camped. Well, I kind of peered over there, and sure enough, there was a couple of Harleys there. And they looked like uh, some fully patched 1% members. So I thought, oh, that's interesting. I wonder if they're camping or if they're uh, just taking a break, you know. Uh, but I mean, they were probably within a, a 100, 150 feet from where our trailer was. Well, within the next hour or so, more of them kept coming in. Uh, a couple vans, uh, a couple trucks pulling trailers, like utility trailers. And they had basically reserved like the three sites right across the street from where our site was. And this club moved in there for the weekend. Well, they were kind of quiet, minding their own business, other than the sound of their Harleys coming in. It didn't bother us one bit. But it was uh, in the afternoon <laughs> when my wife says, have you seen your brother? And I said, no, I'm looking around and I look across the street and here he is over there standing in the middle of the 1% motorcycle club. Now picture my brother, he's wearing tennis shoes, white socks, like tan cargo pants, uh, baggy t-shirt and this floppy like safari type hat and he is over there just carrying on with these guys whose bike is this whose bike is this one right here how fast does this thing go no I mean tell me how's the fat what's the fastest you've ever had this bike going and I'm, I'm just like beside myself I thought you got to be kidding me he's gonna get his nut lights knocked out I mean, he's dealing with some shifty guys over there that he doesn't really fit in with at all. I mean, my brother is not a biker. Well, eventually he saunters back over into our camp and I says, dude, leave those guys alone. You know, I'm not saying they're dangerous, but I'm saying if you continue to pester them, it might not turn out good for you. You're gonna get clocked because they're only gonna tolerate you so much. That's their club, that's their gathering. Leave them alone, please. Well, you'd think that would be the end of it, no. And I'm not paying attention to what my brother's doing. I'm building a campfire and I'm getting dinner ready. I'm gonna cook some burgers over the fire. Our friends had camped uh, probably a uh, uh, couple hundred yards down the campground at another campsite and they were coming over to our campsite for dinner 
and uh, about that time here comes my brother with some of the one percenters and brings them into our camp and uh, the one percenter guy says hey uh, uh, this guy tells us that you've got some firewood we can use well I had the back of my truck tailgate down and I had some firewood in there but it was basically enough firewood for us for the weekend and and not a whole lot more so I'm thinking oh okay well my buddy was there and he stepped up and he says hey I'll tell you what my pickup truck is over at our campsite and I've got about a half I, I got I, I've got a, a, a truckload of firewood in there that we had planned on burning but since we're spending all of our time over here at your camp I'll bring my truck over and I'll unload some of my firewood for them so he did that he un unloaded a good pile of firewood for them so the one percenters <laughs> could have a campfire uh, you would have think that they would have thought of that ahead of time maybe and brought some firewood with them but no they didn't uh, so you'd think they were all set you know well, it probably was maybe another 45 minutes later. My brother comes marching. He's back over there with the one percenters, and he comes back over. And he says, hey, I told those guys they can't get their campfire started. They don't have any kindling wood. They don't have any newspaper. They don't got anything. I told them you'd come over there and help them get their fire going for them. Okay, here comes Itchy to the rescue one more time. So I grab my lighter fluid, I grab my newspaper, I grab some kindling wood, and I walk over into this club, and uh, they're all standing around staring at us. I threw some new, wadded up some newspaper, threw, stacked the kindling neatly in there, posed the whole thing down with my lighter fluid, and lit the thing, and boof, they had a campfire. But they're pretty grateful. You know, they shook my hand, they said, thanks a lot, man, appreciate it. And that was the end of the story. It was all good from there. And I asked my brother, I said, please, leave them alone. Don't go over there anymore. We're spending our camp here at our camp. Let them have their camp over there. Uh, well, that was pretty much the, the uh, end of that. Uh, we had a wonderful time spending the weekend with our friends from southern Ohio and got to know them and have had a, a a good relationship for quite a few years with them now uh, and had have actually camped with them a couple times through the years and have gone down and visited them at their new home that they have down on the in the uh, southern part of the state so my brother uh spent his time here and Flew back home, and all was good. <laughs> Everybody was happy once again. So that was that's my my memory of that particular camp uh, that we had that year. My brother was able to recover from his divorce, and he's doing very well now. He's he's pretty much a different person. Uh, not that guy that was almost having a mental breakdown because of his divorce he's he's doing quite well now well it's too hot to spend the day outside for one uh, secondly uh, we have got a doctor's appointment for uh, V this afternoon so uh, I need to go in the house and get ready for that and it's nice and cool in the house with our air conditioner. So I think I'm going to go in there now. I wanted to work in the garden. The garden's growing great guns right now. And it needs a little bit of TLC. But uh, she says, no, you're not going to go out and work in the garden today. It's just too hot. And I agree. It's, it's roasting hot right here in the shade. So I'm going to head in cats and take it easy. So thanks for joining me. Give my video a thumbs up if you haven't yet subscribe to our videos we would love to have you along for this ride till next time cats
Ride hard and die free. Mm -hmm.